Hey everybody, it's Chris, and as I indicated previously, I am here in this video to talk about one of the greatest mistakes that I ever made in my life. Now, I don't have active regret about it because I don't think that's helpful, and I don't think that's the reason for for having lessons or for being a victim or being a victimizer. We're not supposed to be carrying it around for the rest of our lives. So, and this again is something that I have made amends for and, and truly tried to deal with. Uh, but I want to share it with you because I want you to see that I come from a normal life where, I mean, normal in terms of statistics, like most of us have gone through some pretty bad stuff in childhood and in life. We've experienced vast ups, vast downs, and we've made some decisions and choices around that. And some of them have been pretty terrible. And I'm somebody who puts myself up on the internet purporting to be a spiritual teacher and to try to talk to people and guide them but I'm not being authentic I don't think unless I show you exactly who it is that I am and from where I've come which is the purpose of the next few videos that I'm gonna do about the mistakes that I've made and if you hear my big dog coo barking in the background I'm sorry and if you hear a lot of noise it's because we're about to move and we're redoing everything in the house so I'm sorry in advance for that now this video is going to be about infidelity and it's going to be um, about betrayal on a, on a truly massive, truly massive level. And I don't want to make excuses for myself because I was the one who betrayed. And at the time, this was 11 years ago, so this is nothing existing in my previous relationship, which I, I just simply would never, ever, ever do that to another person ever again. So I just... This is something that happened, you know, when I was 35, and so I'm 46 right now, so a long time ago. Um, I was in a relationship that I wasn't conscious enough to recognize, simply wasn't an energetic match. I was talking a lot to my partner at the time and explaining, hey, this really needs to change, and I'm upset about X, Y, Z, but I did. the delivery was all off with me because, remember, my father was an abusive, violent, you know, loud-mouthed dude with a substance abuse problem and I never really learned how to be a decent human being in terms of communication and expression. I just always barreled in and yelled or cried. I was just way too emotional and I think my partner at the time had begun to shut down and just sort of la 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 whenever I got like that. So he wasn't hearing when I was trying in my own way to tell him things were terribly wrong and as a result ultimately I made the decision to be unfaithful and it was something brief that happened, but it happened within a marriage, which I just think that is so out of integrity. And it's, I wanna say shameful, but I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed because I realize it's a lesson, but it's just such not the right thing to do. And if you're somebody out there contemplating perhaps having an affair or stepping out or just getting what you need from somebody else, I just encourage you, please don't do that. Please don't do that because it delivers such an energetic blow, not just to you, and it does to you, but to the other person. And I don't know if you know what it's like to see somebody that you love down on his or her knees, weeping, open mouth, crying. I wish that upon nobody. I don't want anybody to feel that, and I don't want anybody to actually have to see that or feel that they have done that to somebody else because that is a gut ripper. And that's what I did to this person. And I did it because I was a coward and I wanted to change the relationship. And I wanted to, I think, get out of the relationship. And I wanted to free up some space and energy and opportunity in my life. But I did it in such an unconscious and terrible way that I just detonated or suicide bombed my life. I didn't think about it. You know what I mean? I was a coward. And for whatever reason, my partner at the time wanted to stay with me. And this is another message I would like to deliver is that there's a healing that can still take place when there's been that kind of massive betrayal, whether it's infidelity or it's lies or whatever it is within the relationship. If both parties truly want to work on it to restore, refresh, and heal it, it can be done. If this has happened to you and this is something you're wondering about, I just want to tell you that it can be done. Now, we didn't do it because I ended up divorcing him ultimately, but here's why. We spent about a year in therapy and that was good because we got to the place where we could truly forgive one another and actually get closer. But we never really went deep enough into the root cause of what was out of, out of alignment in the relationship. The things that I was doing and the things that I, how I thought, my paradigm, my orientation never got addressed, neither did his. And so even though we forgave and healed from the experience and the event, we didn't fix 
the foundation, if you will. And so within two or three years, you know, we were actually getting a divorce and, and we did end up divorcing. And I, to this day, wish that man nothing but love. And in fact, I've made overtures, you know, I've tried many times to to sort of make it right not that you ever really can but to contextualize it and and honestly just to own the stuff that i did and to to when we own stuff like we can't just say i'm sorry i hurt you but like just you got to get ugly with it you got to be like look this is what i did this freaking horrible thing that i did to you and to our family and to our life and to our house and to every i'm so sorry and i own it like and i did that you know i claimed it but at that point, he just, by the time I actually divorced him years later, after he had given me that extra chance and I still, you know, I, I faced the fact that this was not working. I, he just couldn't do it anymore with me. He was just like, I can't, yeah, you know, I have a great life, but I just can't anymore. And, and I, every single day, well, not every single day because I don't think about it every day, thankfully, but every time I do think about it, and it's getting less and less now, I send love to him. And I send light to him and he's remarried and he seems happy and I'm so happy about that. I sure wish I had done it the right way. I sure wish I had given him the benefit of dignity, but I didn't. I robbed him of dignity and in, in doing so I robbed myself of dignity and I, I became that which I never wanted to be. My father being the abusive man that he was, and the hard man, the loud-mouthed, womanizing, degrading personality that he was when he wasn't being somebody I truly loved, which I did. My father was cheating on my mom all the time. All the time. And that's not an excuse, but it is a pattern and it's a model. And so many of us grew up with parents who modeled behavior that we now have integrated into the system of who we are and we express it sometimes directly, such as I did. I, di I directly expressed the flaw or the energetic pattern of my dad, but other times we express it in substitution forms. We, we maybe take it out on ourselves or we do other things and express out that junk because we haven't cleared it and, and we screw up our lives doing so or we stutter our lives or we get stuck in places because we haven't realized the correlation. And so I do think having my, my dad, who is such a powerful, iconic personality in my entire life, having him model that for me gave me energetic permission, I think, to enter into you know, the point of no return in terms of infidelity. And I'm able now, 11 years later, to see that that is what happened and that is, that is what I did. And as a result of actually doing that monumental betrayal, and it is, energetically, spiritually, it is a monumental betrayal. We don't wanna be doing that, okay? Take it from me. But as a result of that, I had energy spiraling in my life around infidelity. And I would find myself, you know, out of the marriage, now single, attracting people who wanted to be unfaithful and just having that kind of pattern, that grid around me, attracting it until I did the work and I exercised all of that energy and I cleaned the grid and I got rid of it I, for a long time. Whew, I used to call myself Jolene. <laughs> like, I don't want to be Jolene from the song, you know. Please, Jolene, don't take my man just because you can. Like, I never wanted, I don't want to affiliate or associate with that anymore because <sighs> it's so painful. Sorry, you know. And for the women out there who had men who were interested in me and they were in a relationship to them, I'm sorry. Uh... I never entered into a relationship with somebody that I thought was married or, or in, with anybody else. Like I never did that again, but I do know that some of the men that were trying to be in my life at the time lied about other relationships. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't ever intend for that, but I know that I just, I'm so sorry. Like I don't, I don't want any part of that. And I want you to see who it is that I am right now. I am fully restored and I am in a beautiful marriage. I am with a man who I confessed all these things to, all of the ugly parts, 
bad parts, sad parts, hard parts. I showed him and I did it immediately because I just wanted to put it right out there. Like, let's let, let there be no question. This is the kind of person I was at that time. And this is the work that I've done to get to here, to be here with you now. I've shared it with him and, and he was able to see the grace and to have grace for me. And we are in a beautiful relationship. One that I hold in such high esteem and I find, I find the sacredness in this union. I get it now. I'm so bummed out a little bit that I had to be 46, 43, 42 before I got what it really meant to be in communion and union with a soul who loves you and who you love. I, it took me so long to clear the patterning and the destruction and the wake of the destruction. All that stuff I had to clear, the work I had to do, it took me a while. But I am so happy and I'm grateful, so grateful that God has given me the blessing of this beautiful marriage irrespective of the things that I have done to other people. Now I share this with you because I'm honest and I wanna be authentic. And I know that some of you out there have done the same thing. And some of it's easy, you know, to run from that bad thing that you've done. It doesn't have to be infidelity or a specific betrayal, but that bad thing that you've done, it's easy to run from it, forget about it, tamp it down. You know, and when it pokes its little head up, you just look the other way, we're, we're avoiding it. I urge and encourage you not to do it. If you want to be a whole spiritual person, you have to deal with your stuff. You have to be honest with your stuff in order to clear it. And it is in the clearing of the stuff, the issues, which is energy that we are able to raise our vibration and begin to truly manifest the life that we want to live. That's how we become God magnetic. We have to face the crap we did, people. We have to face the crap other people did to us. And we have to sit with it, own it, acknowledge it, and then intentionally release it. I have done that. And I hope that you see the person that I truly am because I'm trying to show you the person that I truly am. And I hope you have grace for me as I have been able to find some grace for myself. And I hope you have love for me as I have found my way to love myself even though I did such a wrong thing. Life's about making mistakes. Life's about success and failure. Life's about experience and some of these experiences are hard and sometimes when you look in that mirror, people, you're not gonna like what you see because what it is you're doing to yourself and to other people. But there's freedom from that. There is the restoration, the refreshing, and the healing. I am an example of that. And if I can help you even a little by sharing this with you, I'm on board. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for the non-judgment. Thank you so much for holding the space for me to share with you. And if you want to share here anything that you've got on your heart, I encourage you to do so. Much love to you. Much love and much aloha.